Hi, I'm Jim Covington. Today is May 14, 2013, and I'd like to welcome you to this week's issue of ISBA State House Review. I have six bills to talk to you about. We've got about two to three weeks left in session. After May 31st, anything with an immediate effective date, such as the budget, will require, require a three-fifths vote, which is much more difficult around here. So everybody's hoping that the General Assembly will conclude its business by May 31st. The first bill I'd like to talk to you about is House Bill 2473, introduced by Representative Dennis Ribelletti of Addison and Rep uh, Senator Mike Conley from uh, Wheaton. And it uh, amends the body attachment statute in the Code of Civil Procedure to ensure or clarify that it does not apply to uh, arrearages for child support enforcement. Last year, uh, the body attachment statute was amended to provide more notice and other things uh, for collection, post, post collection procedures, and this clarifies that it does not apply to child support orders. The second bill I'd like to talk to you about is House Bill 3172, introduced by Representative Jill Tracy of Brown County and uh, Senator uh, Jim Claiborne, the Deputy Majority Leader from uh, from uh, East St. Louis, and it, what it does is amends the Continuance Under Supervision Statute, a section of the Juvenile Court Act, Section 615, to create kind of a bifurcated procedure that it requires the approval of the state's attorney to issue this before a finding of delinquency. After a finding of delinquency, the judge may go ahead and order it if the judge uh, believes it appropriate, and then it builds into the statute the exact criteria for supervision under the adult statute, it leaves current law in either procedure of the bifurcated that uh, it you cannot it cannot be used for uh, any felony uh, any forcible felony a class X felony or a first degree murder and that is on second reading in the uh, in the Senate. The third bill I'd like to talk to you about is Senate Bill 2306 and it amends the Right to Privacy in the Workplace Act. Uh, it is introduced by Senator. Uh, the minority leader of the Senate, Christine Rodonio from Lamont, and uh, Representative Frank Martino from Spring Valley in the House. Uh, last year, the General Assembly went in and uh, uh, amended this act to ensure that employers couldn't demand certain information from employees on password and access information to uh, social networking sites. This goes in and clarifies that uh, nothing in this act prohibits an employer from complying with the duty to screen employees or applicants before hiring or to monitor or retain employee communications as required under the Illinois insurance laws or federal law or the self-regulatory organization as defined in the Securities Exchange Act of 1934 if it applies to a business account, not their personal account. And that is passed the Senate and on third reading in the House. The fourth bill I'd like to talk about is House Bill 1, introduced by Representative Lou Lang from Skokie and Senator Bill Hain from Alton, uh, that creates a four-year pilot project to allow uh, dying or ill patients to use medical cannabis as certified by a physician. And it would apply to uh, small amounts and it would require the doctor to certify that the patient suffers from a, quote, debilitating medical condition, close quote, such as cancer, HIV slash AIDS, or hepatitis C, and that the limited use, this limited use, would ease that suffering. That has passed the House and is on third reading in the Senate awaiting a final vote. The fifth bill I'd like to talk about is House Bill 2404, introduced by Representative Barbara Curry, the Majority Leader of the House, and Senator Heather Staines from Chicago, that raises the age of juvenile court from 17 to 18 for most felony offenses. Under current law, about three to four years ago, they raised the age of juvenile court for most misdemeanors. Uh, after a study by the Illinois Juvenile Justice Commission that studied the benefits of that, they suggested that raising that to 18 for most felonies. Uh, this essentially would align our state with uh, 38 other states and the federal government and, and the common culture. That has passed the House and is on third reading in the Senate. The sixth and final bill I'd like to talk to you about is House Bill 2269, introduced by Representative Marcus Evans from Chicago and Senator Napoleon Harris from Chicago as well. About, about five years ago, uh, there were, the General Assembly passed a law that I believe is applicable to Cook County requiring a thumbprint for security uh, to guard against fraud for the transfer of uh, some real estate documents. 
this bill simply extends that five-year sunset that's due this year to expire to another five years to 2018. That has passed the House and is now in the Senate awaiting uh, a vote in the on third reading in the Senate. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next week.